Do you have a newborn that you're struggling with sleep or just maybe wanting to know what's best for your kiddo and how much sleep do they need while you're in the right place? That's what we're going to talk about here today is newborn sleep, how much and when. Hey friends, I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell. I'm actually a chiropractor by training, but I found my passion really empowering parents to teach their little ones to sleep and parent confidently day and night as a sleep and parenting consultant. I'm the creator of the Helping Baby Sleep Method. And newborns, can they sleep too much? Honestly, it's very difficult for them to sleep too much. Here's why. The research shows that they need somewhere between 16 to 20 hours of sleep in a 24-hour period. That is a lot. And one of the most common errors that I see people making and that I did myself is that they underestimate how much sleep their little one needs. They keep them up too long between sleeps or before bedtime, and that actually can backfire for you. Sleep really does beget sleep. The more well-rested your kiddo is, the easier it is to get them to fall asleep and then stay asleep. So most newborns, up to three months, can't stay awake more than about an hour and a half between sleeps. You will have the witching hour, which occurs between 6 and 9 p.m., where kids are kind of fussy. You have napping and feeding and napping and feeding, and it's kind of not very well structured, if you will, and that is normal. That will tend to recede around 10 to 12 weeks because that's when our little people start to produce their own melatonin. And melatonin is one of the sleep hormones. It helps regulate circadian rhythm because the research also shows that a child's circadian rhythm isn't fully mature until about six months, which is why sleep tends to get a little bit easier by that age. There's also a leap in maturity around four months and again around that 10 to 12 week stage when they start to produce their melatonin. And then you'll find that that 9 p.m. bedtime that was, um, you know, you may have struggled with even to get them down then will become earlier because they're regulating their sleep system that much better with the addition of melatonin. Prior to this, they were getting melatonin through mother's breast milk. And when they were in the womb, they were getting it from the mother there. Okay. So before three months, sleep really is highly irregular. The research shows that kids will sleep around the clock in about three to four hour chunks, which is why I don't ever want you to wake your newborn up after two hours. I know you may have read that somewhere, wake them up after two hours, but the amount of sleep that they need is based on their metabolism. So what's happening rapidly those first few months, they are growing exponentially. That rate of growth will never be duplicated again in their life. They will double their size from birth to five months of age. What happens at five months of age in six months, five, six months, their sleep needs will actually drop off because they aren't growing as exponentially. But think about how much your baby changed and grew in those first couple of weeks. And basically they will wake up eat and fall right back to sleep in those first few weeks. And it kind of can give the parent a false sense of security that they'll keep doing that. But they don't always do that. They may end up starting to fight sleep or stay awake. Most newborns up to three months can't really stay awake more than about an hour to an hour and a half. And it's your job to get them back to sleep and know when sleep time should be happening. Okay. And if you think they need 16 to 20 hours of 24 hour sleep, that's not a lot of awake time. The other thing I often hear from parents is that my child has reversed their days and nights. Okay. If you're breastfeeding, especially that is like so difficult to do because they're getting their melatonin from you, which is going to tell their body when it's nighttime. In general, what I see, I actually don't really believe in day night reversal. I've seen a couple cases where kids have really shifted schedules, like they're going to bed at midnight, not waking up till 10 in the morning. Um, I've seen that at a variety of ages, but that is extremely rare. In general, what's happening is your child is uncomfortable in the night with gas or some other issue, and that's keeping them awake. Because I've yet to see a content and happy baby who's awake in the night and has their nights and days reversed. Then what tends to happen is they sleep more the next day to compensate for that lost sleep in the night. And parents think, oh, they've reversed their days and nights. But it actually is that you miss the root issue, which is some sort of discomfort or overtiredness. So overtiredness can happen if they're not napping enough during the daytime, if you have too long stretches between sleeps, or your bedtime is just way too late. 9 p.m. is a great average bedtime those first few months. The other question I get is about nap time. Can my little one nap too much? And I have seen other books and whatnot say wake them up after two hours. But when you really know the research like I do, don't wake them up after two hours because their body is sleeping based on their metabolic needs. It's restorative. The only time I'll wake kids up is if I need to prioritize getting food into them during the daytime. 
But in general, what will happen is most kids don't sleep through feeds. They will wake up on their own naturally. So I don't like wake them up at two hours. I let them sleep. Sometimes we have a three hour nap, maybe even three and a half. And then they wake up crying because they're really hungry because it's probably been three, three and a half hours since their last feed. And they will come to the breast or bottle and take a very full feed, which is the third pillar of the helping baby sleep method, being an intentional feeder, using food for fuel to stack those calories in the daytime so you can get longer stretches of sleep at night. The second pillar of the helping baby sleep method is timing, what we've been talking about. Putting kids down too early or too late can actually make it harder for them, and then they tend to wake up more. So two simple things that you can do right now for your newborn is make sure that they're back asleep at the very most an hour and a half between sleeps. And are you being an intentional feeder? When they come to the breast of the bottle, are they taking you know, that three to five ounces or both sides from the breast so that you're stacking calories in the daytime to get longer stretches of sleep at night. And day-night reversal is actually really, really hard to do. If you're struggling in the night, there's something else going on that you got to be a detective for and figure out. That's our summary for today. Don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss another baby sleep and parenting tip. Thanks for being here.